Here with us now is the managing director of the Brantley Risk and Insurance Center at Appalachian State University, David Marlette. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, morning. So look, here's the harsh reality. Many Americans impacted by this and all hurricanes are not actually covered like they think they are, perhaps. Um, can, can you tell me, like, uh, what's, what's going on here? I mean, is this, is this pretty widespread for what you're seeing in people in these areas? It is. It's very unfortunate the way that our system is set up to where we separate perils under different policies. And just meeting with people in our community uh, this week at, at different volunteer operations, one person after another is coming up. And like you mentioned earlier, they, they just don't have the right coverage. And so okay. they're going to have losses that are uninsured. Yeah, we spoke with a desperate woman yesterday, Stephanie Zara. She was rescued off the rooftop of her home there in North Carolina. Let's play a clip and I want to get your reaction. Also, we've been denied for uh, our insurance coverage because we did not have flood insurance. So we have no choice but to rebuild. We're hoping for some help from FEMA. So where do you go? I mean, what, what do you do? These people don't have a roof over their head. If you don't have stacks of cash to go stay in a hotel somewhere, what do these people do? Yeah, I mean, that's the question. It's been a really hard week meeting with people who are realizing um, and feeling bad, like they made a mistake. But honestly, it's like nobody would expect they would need flood insurance in this area. And so um, you know, hopefully they can get some relief from FEMA. We're trying to help them um, obtain what insurance coverage might be available for their automobiles, for example, they probably do have coverage. Right. Um, they may have flood or they may not, but we're trying to make sure they, they're taking the right steps after the claim, find what they get from the carrier, and then um, feed them onto to FEMA for help. Yeah, nobody expected a, a little old mountain town in Western North Carolina to get wiped out like this. And it's not just Asheville, it's Banner Elk and Black Mountain and Lake Lore, and I could go on and on. Um, yeah, so so what do you do if if you are trying to rebuild and you do have some sort of policy What's like, how can the money start coming in quickly so that you don't go into further debt? Right. Yeah. First step, you need to make sure you have your documentation in order. So um, if you do evacuate, have your uh, identification, have your insurance information, uh, know who your insurance agent is so you can contact them as, as quickly as possible. Um, make sure you take pictures, document everything you can, take a home inventory. Uh, photographs, again, are, are very important in video. And if possible, try to protect your property that's that's undamaged, take it to a higher location, someplace else, cover it with a tarp, um, try to mitigate additional damage with the rain that, that's going to come in the future. Yeah, it's hard to think about running and getting your documents, gathering your documents when you're trying to grab your kid and your dog running out, uh, trying to get on the roof of your house, though, for like this poor yeah. woman. Um, when homeowners are shopping for insurance, so ahead of a devastating event like this, what questions should they, they be asking insurance agents? What should we be asking to make sure that we are covered from possible natural disasters? Yeah, you want to find a, a, a reputable licensed agent and um, encourage you to meet with them in person uh, so that they know what you own, what your needs are. A lot of these coverages vary state to state, so you want to find somebody local who knows your, your situation. Uh, there's going to be multiple policies that are available homeowners, renters, flood, and so on. Um, so you want to make sure you're obtaining the, the right coverage and also the right amount of coverage because many people may have the appropriate insurance, but due to inflation, increased construction costs, they don't have enough to cover a total loss. Can you talk a little bit about insurance premiums going up and rates going up? I mean, people feel like they're just spending too much of their paycheck on insurance. Absolutely, yeah, and it's been going up uh, considerably the last several years. Uh, it's sort of a perfect storm of a, a lot of bad things happening. Obviously, climate issues, uh, inflation, increased construction costs, um, the um, you know, uncertainty over the future. So insurers are not only raising their premium, they're, they're also scaling back their existing coverage. And they're losing money. So it's not like they're making a lot of money in the situation either. So there's, there's really um, a, a lot of things that are going in the wrong direction right now. Okay, now this mountain town, not in a hurricane prone area, but for those that are, like we're looking at Florida and a, another tropical storm, tropical storm Milton is brewing right now. For people in hurricane prone areas, what type of insurance do you recommend? Well, hopefully they have homeowner's insurance. They, they likely do have that. If they have a loan, their bank's gonna require it. Uh, absolutely need to have flood insurance. Now there's a, a, a wait period for when you apply for it and when it's active. So the sooner you can apply, the better. Uh, if you live in an earthquake-prone region, um, you need to also have an endorsement added to your homeowner's 
or earth movement. So people are tending to overlook that one at the moment, yeah. but that that's critical as well. Yeah, well, I know it's hard to watch your friends and family go through this. You're in Boone, North Carolina. What's everybody going through around you? Uh, it's been tough. You know, I, I think that it's a small community, as you mentioned earlier. Um, but it, you know, I have been inspired by a lot of my friends and colleagues and people in our community. The number of trucks heading up the mountain, just people in their own pickup truck with generators and chainsaws and shovels coming up and helping has been inspiring. And, and um, you know, it, it's times like this you really do appreciate your neighbors. Yeah, brother helping brother, sister helping sister, people helping complete strangers, and even people coming in from out of state to, to volunteer. David Marlette, thank you so much for your insight today, and good luck to you and your family.